Now I won't ask you this time because I have only one thing left and it's actually the beauty of ambient lighting. It relates a little bit to the first I was, I was speaking about where we say uh, when we uh, evolved we were living outdoor and if you are having a workspace like this, my colleague sitting there doing his, his lighting calculation, he has actually like a dome above himself of bright blue light and this is the way that our organism really likes to think it's daytime. As soon as this goes away, the balance between cortisol and melatonin starts to fade and he starts to become tired. Out there he would not fall asleep at 2 o'clock. Inside the office he probably would. So, uh, so we try to drag that insights, that in into the space somehow and we do that by having these bright levels like above 100 candles per square meter. Some of the nicest work I've ever seen was done by Jonathan Spears from Spears and Major when he li made the lighting design for the Grand Mosque in Abu Dhabi. I don't know if any of you guys have been there but should you ever go to Abu Dhabi it should be worthwhile seeing because they actually created a magnificent level of ambient lighting so that the entire building is glowing. It's a very, very pleasant place to be in. What Spears and Major are really good at is getting close to their customer, really understanding the end user's wants and needs. So uh, when they made the Grand Mosque, <coughs> they made a lot of research into how people pray, what their religion tells them and so on. Because at the same time they made the Grand Mosque, they also made the lighting design in St. Paul's Cathedral in London. And the difference here is that Christian, in Christianity you pray towards the heavens and in uh, in Muslim religion you pray towards Mecca, so the focus is on the surface that you are praying to. And it's, it's just for me a sign that they really, they really go into what their customers want in this situation. It's a, it's a very, very nice way of working and they made two beautiful installations. This picture doesn't really justify the beauty of this cathedral, but coming back to the Grand Mosque, it's really amazing. All light sources are hit. There are no, no fixtures anywhere, everything is integrated into the architecture and it just still produces such a high light level on ambient surfaces. So it's really a, an example for us to look at and to be inspired by and learn by. Unfortunately I've never been there myself but uh, one day I'll go there and have a look at it. Somebody in Sydney told us there were like either 40,000 or 400,000 little halide lamps in there and they were pretty expensive to relamp. That's why it's so nice that it's in Abu Dhabi because they don't care about that. <laughs> so it's, um, it's, it's really a pleasure. I've been working on, on a couple of projects in Saudi Arabia and in, in Dubai and it, it is a freedom, a little bit more freedom than we normally have when we come up with crazy ideas in, in a market like yours. So uh, if you have a good idea, they'll most likely carry it through. As I told you earlier, in our part of the world when we do the research, we are very interested in finding the balance between the sensitivity of our retina and the size of our pupil. A lot of these examinations, a lot of the glare results that's being done, you put sort of sedative into the eye so that the pupil opens at maximum so that you can take that out of the equation. It's pretty nice to work with but very seldom that anybody sits in the office with wide open pupils because we don't do that unless we put sedative into our eyes <laughs> and we don't do that all the time. So the, the issue here is that whatever, whatever comes into the retina we have to use as low energy levels as possible. So we want to have a partly dark adapted retina and a very big pupil size and we get that by having values around 80 candles. When you go up to 100 the pupil starts to close a little bit and the retina starts to bright adapt a little bit. So you will have the same sensation of light with a lower lighting level because whatever I've told you about all this biodynamically active lighting, we cannot make it within the energy frames that we have today because we need a lot of energy to do that. So we have to find somewhere else. This could help us reduce the need for brightness so that we can save some energy there. And if you guys would switch from what per square meter to kilowatt hour per square meter per year like we have, you have come a very big step towards, towards really doing some lighting that is different. Because if you want to do creative lighting, it's much better to talk about energy use than installed effect. 
for because in a in a building like this you could throw in as much light you possibly want but you could argue that you only use it two hours a day so it has been very liberating for us in the European countries that we work with energy now instead of watt per square meter okay we have to share it between air air conditioning heating elevators escalators lifts and stuff like that and lighting and if we are not moving fast then the lighting guys just gets what's left. So they throw in some air conditioning, throw in some elevators, and then suddenly you're left with two watts per square meter to be creative. Pretty tough. So you have to raise the flag very early in the process and say, we want to do something really exciting lighting here. So we would like to have like six or seven watts per square meter. And then they have to find some energy efficient elevators or stuff like that. <laughs> but when we worked on one of our creative workshops yesterday, we actually had a lady that said she did her lighting design in a way so that people was encouraged to use the stairs, to encourage to stand up, so that you actually try to make people more active to get more exercise and be more fit by means of the lighting. And if we could argue that we did great lighting design, tempting people to use the stairs, we may be able to get a few watts from the elevator people. <laughs> So, but it's a, it's a great step in the right direction for us. We've made a lot of scientific research and whenever I tell you some of these stories, there's always a published paper with a stamp of a universe, university behind it. So it's not something we do back in the basement, it's something we do on the university, either a PhD or a master student carries it out and we are just sort of helping them with the formulation and some of the work. But in general, it's always a recognized university and a skilled student who does the job. This is one of our latest test sites where we had for one year, we had two reference, two classrooms in a university in Sweden where we had this like an ordinary up-down solution where we had uh, fluorescent tubes lighting up the level here to 500 lux, also 500 lux on the whiteboard. And this is like any schoolroom should look like in Sweden. We measure the melatonin cortisol level, we measure the academic performance, and then we had a reference room where we put in a new fixture we developed. And the idea was that we would flood light the entire ceiling with indirect LED lighting at 4,000 Kelvin. And from these reflector systems here, we would light this part of the wall all around the classroom so that we had an ambient lighting of 500 lux and we had the ceiling. And if you're sitting in that room, it may not look like that on the picture, but if you're sitting there, it actually feels like you're taking off the roof of the building and you have a, a, white, a white sky or clouds above your head. And it energizes people in a different way. We have the measurement from the cortisol levels and the melatonin levels. We have their, their feelings about how the light feels, but we still don't have the academic performance. It'll come in a couple of months and then the papers will be published. So this is just preliminary results that I'm showing you now. Skip to that. It's all for young people, and uh, this, uh, these are the results here. We talked about visibility. If people find that, the, uh, that it's, it's nice to be in the surrounding, we define that as, as visibility. And on a scale from 1 to 10, people plotted in. The indirect lighting system was slightly more positive to be in than the T5 solution, where we have direct indirect. The subjective activation, that's how active you feel when you get into the into the classroom and you plot it during times of the day. So it seems that in the morning, people felt a little bit more tired in this classroom than in the other one, but it switched around 11 o'clock and the rest of the day, people felt more energized in the room where we had the LED indirect solution than where we had the uh, T5 solution. And finally over here, we measure the uh, morning cortisol level. That means the cortisol level in their bloodstream and with the indirect LED solution, we had a significantly higher concentration in the bloodstream than we had with the T5 solution. And that all points in the direction that we probably will have better academic performance and more alertness in the students when we get the last, the last day um, results. I was just uh, pushing a little bit on this evidence-based research because I think it's sensible to be a little bit critic if people tell you some stories where you think this just sounds too good to be true, then normally it is. So you can always ask about where do you have that from and people will probably, hopefully, 
give you a published paper by some university where the first one we did many years ago was about the balance between direct and indirect lighting. We moved on to finding out the ambient color temperature preferred to create a biological response. And the latter one we did was um, a school study called Pickhurst study, which some of you probably have heard about. And in this square here, we will put in the last one that I just shared with you once the papers are published. But feel free to ask about it. And of course, then if you feel like reading the entire report, it's available. But at least make sure that uh, whatever people tell you is, um, is based on evidence-based research instead of just something you did in the basement together with two friends a Tuesday afternoon. And um, I think that sort of concludes what I was about to share with you. I think, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks.